Building an online business does not need to be rocket science. And in this video, I'm gonna demystify the entire process of building an online business from scratch in 2020. Hey, what's up? It's Sean Anthony. And if you are an entrepreneur looking to level up your business, your skills, and your income, make sure you go below right now, hit that subscribe button, and I'm posting videos just like this every Tuesday and Thursday. So in this video, I'm answering the question, Sean, how would you start a business from scratch if you had zero dollars, you had zero experience, zero skills, if an asteroid came down and just wiped out your business and, and wiped you out and you started all over again, right? So I get this question a lot. So in this video, I'm gonna teach you or I'm gonna, you're gonna learn exactly how I would build a business step-by-step step from scratch if I were starting all over again from the beginning, okay? So let's just jump right into it. Step number one is to, I would start with a service and I recommend you start with a service too, especially if you have $0, you have zero skills, zero accomplishments, zero experience in anything, right? Now, why would I start with a service? Well, first of all, it costs $0 to get started, right? It costs $0 to deliver a service and get a result for somebody, right? It's, it's, you don't have to do the work yourself either. You can find people to do the work for you. I'm gonna talk about how to do that later in this video, but it costs $0 to get started. You don't need experience. And all you're doing is you're delivering a service and getting a result for a client or a company, right? Now, the other thing is it's easier to sell, right? And I wanna think, I want you to think about this scenario. If you were to go to a gym and you had a personal trainer who came up to you and said, I will lose 30 pounds for you. I will do the push-ups for you. I'll run five miles a day for you. I'll do the pull-ups for you. I'll lift weights for you and make you huge and ripped and muscular. Uh, you would probably hire that personal trainer over the personal trainer who says, you gotta do the push-ups. You gotta run the miles. You gotta lift the weights, right? I'm not saying this is possible to find a personal trainer who can lose weight for you, but I'm saying if that was a scenario, that's, the person you would pick, right? And that's the way you wanna think about services, right? When you're selling services that deliver a result for somebody, you're going in there and you're being that personal trainer who's saying, I will lose the weight for you, okay? So I would start with a service, I recommend you do too if you have zero skills, zero dollars, and zero experience. Now step number two is to pick a niche or a group of people that you wanna work, that you wanna work with and deliver a service to, right? Now, it's so important that you do this. I see people who are brand new to entrepreneurship and online business, they go in and they say, oh, I don't know my passion yet. I'm just gonna go and try to serve everybody and serve a really general broad market and then narrow it down later. That's the wrong way to start because you're gonna find it very difficult to get any sort of tra traction when you're not speaking to anyone specifically, right? So you wanna pick a niche and it's ideally something that you're, you're either passionate about, you're interested in learning more about, or that you already have experience in working with, right? And this is just gonna make it so much easier on you if you, have, if you have some kind of passion or interest or experience with the niche that you pick, right? So for me, I fell into the bucket of, I was interested and passionate about a certain niche, right? I didn't really have experience with working in this niche and it was B2B SaaS companies, business to business SaaS companies, software as a service, right? And I was passionate about it because I use a ton of software to run my business, right? So I wanted to learn more about software companies. I wanted to work with other software companies and help them grow their business, right? So I thought I wanna work, how do I get closer to software companies and learn more about them, right? It, it's to deliver a service to them and help, get, help them get a result, right? So that was a niche that I picked and you wanna pick something that you're passionate, interested, or have experience and working with, okay? Number three is to create an ideal client profile. Now, what is an ideal client profile? I'm gonna to refer to it as an ICP. An ICP just helps you get a more detailed view on who your actual ideal client is, right? So you pick the niche. In my case, it was B2B SaaS companies. Now I wanna ask myself, how big are these companies, right? So we wanted to target companies that were in the range of like 20 to 40 employees, right? Where are they located? So we were targeting mostly SaaS companies in the U in USA and Canada, right? And you want you might want to narrow it down by states. You might want to narrow that down by cities or or whatever, right? But you want to know more about where are these people located, where are these companies located, or your ideal client located, right? How much, like in our case, how much revenue are they doing a year? So we want to target companies that weren't just getting started. We want to target companies that were already doing a few million dollars a year because that means they can invest in our service, right? You also wanna know about the pain points and problems of your niche and of your clients, right? Your ideal client, right? So you wanna think of it like this. You want to get clear on their point A, their point A, which is their pain, their current pain, their painful situation that they want to escape from, right? And then you wanna get clear on their point B, which is where do they wanna get? What's their desired situation? What's like their dream scenario, right? 
So for us, B2B SaaS companies, what was their painful situation? Well, their painful situation was that they didn't have enough lead. They didn't have enough customers, not enough sales, not enough demos for, uh, for their software, right? What was their desired situation? Well, simple. They wanted more leads, more sales, more sales appointments, more demos, right? More conversations with their customers. So we then thought, okay, their point A is not enough leads, not enough customers. Their point B was they wanted more leads and more customers. So now you gotta think about the gap in between the point A and the point B. What are you gonna deliver? This is your service, right? This, the gap is what you're gonna deliver as your service to help them get from their point A to their point B, right? So you wanna ask yourself, okay, this is their point A, which is their pain. This is their point B, which is their pleasure. What am I gonna to offer to close that gap and get them to their point B, which is their pleasure state, their desired situation, right? So you wanna to start to think about that. In our case, there's tons of different things, right? SEO, there's Facebook advertising, there's Google pay-per-click, there's LinkedIn lead generation, right? Those are all things that could help them short or close the gap between their point A and their point B, right? So you wanna to start to think about these things, you wanna get clear on your ideal client profile, create that, write these things out, get clear on who exactly you're targeting, right? Their job title and stuff as well. Uh, step four is to start researching other offers and competitors who are already successful, right? And this is another huge mistake that I see people make is they go in, they wanna try, they wanna reinvent the wheel, they wanna invent a brand new product or service that's never before been sold. And that is such a massive mistake unless you're like Elon Musk, right? Unless you have deep pockets and you're just an absolute freaking genius. Uh, you wanna go out, especially if you're new or you're brand new to entrepreneurship, you wanna go out and research things that are already selling. Okay, this is gonna make your life so much easier. You wanna go out, research offers and competitors who are already doing well and model after that, model after success. It's gonna make your life so much easier. They've already proven that people are gonna pay money for a certain service or like a certain niche is already buying things, right? You wanna look at competitors and offers that are already selling because you wanna model after that. You never wanna reinvent the wheel, especially if you're just getting started from scratch, right? So you wanna research some offers, some competitors. You wanna make sure that they're already selling. Look at the price points that they're selling at, right? And make a list of all the things that you find, all the different offers and different niches and different things that people are buying within your niche, right? So for us, again, we, we made a list of things like LinkedIn lead generation, Facebook advertising, Google PPC, all of these things could help our niche go from point A to point B. We ultimately landed on LinkedIn lead generation, right? But for you, it might be different. You're gonna have to do some research, go on, go on places like Facebook groups, on Quora, on Google, on forums, on YouTube. Look at what people are asking and saying about it in your niche and what they're looking, like what their problems are and what they're looking to do to solve that, right? So that's step number four. So step number five is to start having real conversations with people in your niche, right? So once you've picked a niche, you pick, you create an ideal client profile, you pick the service that you want to deliver to help them get from point A to point B, you need to start going out to your market and having real conversations with people who fit your ICP, your ideal client profile, okay? So how do you do this? Well, you can use platforms for free, like email, social media, like Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, and you can reach out to people in your niche that fit your ideal client profile, start having conversations with them and getting on the phone with quick 15 minute to 15 minute to 20 minute phone calls and learning more about your market and your niche, right? So a simple message that we used to use when we first got started was just, hey, so-and-so, I saw you were a SaaS founder and I want to reach out. I help SaaS founders with LinkedIn lead generation and generating more leads and appointments for their SaaS company on LinkedIn. Are you currently leveraging LinkedIn to generate more leads? If not, I'd love to have a quick 15 minute phone call with you to, sh to share some ideas on how we might be able to help you do that, right? So something very simple, and what does this do? It talks about their current A situation, their pain, they don't have enough leads. It talks about their desired situation, their point B, they want more leads. And then it talks about a way to close that gap and get them there, right? Which is LinkedIn lead generation, which helps them to get more leads and demos and appointments, right? So it's something as simple as that is getting on the radar of your prospects, reaching out to them, having conversations on the phone with your market, your niche, your ideal client profile, okay? So that's the goal of these is not to sell, right? You do not wanna pitch in these messages and say, hey, buy my stuff right here, buy my thousand dollar product here or service here, right? You wanna get on the phone with them, learn more about their business, listen to what they have to say, like listen to their problems, their pain points, ask them questions about their situation and their business. Hey, what are you currently doing to generate leads? What's working, what's not working? What would you like to see more of, right? 
Just learn about them, have a conversation with them, learn more about their problems, their pain points, and then also what they'd like to do to help them get to whatever their desired situation is, right? So you're having these conversations with your market. So step number six is to secure clients, right? Now, from the conversations that you've had, the 15, 20 minute phone calls that you've had from the last step, when you're starting conversations, you are gonna have a percentage of those people be qualified and a fit to work with you, right? They're gonna have that point A problem and they're gonna have that point B situ desired situation that they wanna get to and the, the vehicle to get them there, right? That service that you're gonna deliver sounds interesting to them, right? you're gonna offer them an opportunity to work with you. Now, first you can show them a quick demo of how your system helps them exactly to get from point A to point B. And then you're also, if you're just getting started, you're also gonna need some social proof, some testimonials in the beginning, right? So you can offer them a limited time discount, you know, 25% off, 50% off. You can offer them incentive pricing for them to get started with you because you're just getting started with the business, right? So you can say, hey, we have a beta, this is a beta launch right now, this is a beta offering or beta service that we're rolling out. Uh, we're, give, we're offering 25% off for the first 10 people to jump on board, right? So the people that are a fit for your service and they do have that point A problem, they do wanna get to the desired situation and the service you have does sound interesting, you're gonna extend them an invitation. So all you gotta do is ask them, hey, does this sound interesting to you? You're gonna show them a quick demo or a, a way that your system works. And at the end of that, just ask them if they wanna get started with you. Hey, where should we go from here? Where do you wanna go from here? Does this sound interesting to you? Do you wanna get started with this? Do you wanna start getting a result, start, start generating more leads with LinkedIn? And that it's as simple as that. They're gonna say either yes or a no, and if they say yes, you collect a payment for the service and you start doing the service for them. So this brings me to step number seven, which is to outsource delivery. Now, what do I mean by this? Well, in the beginning, I talked about if you have zero skills, zero dollars, zero accomplishments, zero background, you're not gonna really know how to deliver the service and get the best result, right? So what I recommend you do is if you have like zero skills and experience, outsource the actual service delivery to get the result to highly skilled and cheap freelancers or white label providers who can actually, who already have a system that works, right? So let's just go back to my example of a B2B SaaS company. Let's just say I sold a SaaS company at $1,500 a month for our LinkedIn lead generation service. Now I would go and outsource that work for step number seven to a different white label provider who acts on behalf of my company, like the client doesn't know that they're actually doing the work. I would outsource all the work for around $300 a month. Now what just happened there? I got a client for $1,500 a month, right? And now I outsourced that to a highly skilled, highly talented freelancer or agency or white label provider who can do the entire service for $300, right? I don't need to know how to do anything from here, right? So I'm just the middleman, I'm managing, managing the relationship between the client and, the, and getting the result through that service, right? So I recommend if you have zero background, zero skills, zero, zero everything, don't spend a year or two years trying to learn like Facebook ads or like Google ads. Just if you wanna get started making money quickly and build an online business from scratch as quickly as possible, outsource the delivery and then if you decide to you know, learn more about something later, you can do that. But if you need to start making money quickly and you don't wanna wait like a year or two years to learn and become the best at it, then just outsource it to someone who already is, right? And collect the payment, collect the, the difference between what you sold it for and the actual fulfillment cost, right? So that's step number seven. Now step number eight, what do you do once you've started to get clients, you're, you've got a system in place to outsource the delivery, well, you can start creating content and documenting your journey. Now, what does this do? Well, it starts to get more people to come to you. So in step number five or six, I can't remember what it was now, I'm talking about going out to your market, hunting your market, and, and going out and talking to your ideal clients, right? Sending them messages first. In step number eight, when you're creating content and you're documenting your journey, you're gonna be delivering massive value to people in your niche and your ideal clients, right? So you're gonna be sharing insights, you're gonna be sharing your journey of how you help other clients get a result, right? You're gonna be sharing your experience as you're delivering the service and getting more clients and as you grow on your journey. And as you share more about this and share content and share value, you're gonna start, start to have people in in your, in your network and in your connection base and your friends on Facebook, they're gonna start reaching out to you and, and be like, hey, how can I start working with you? How can I learn more about getting started with you? They're gonna come to you and you're gonna attract them rather than you having to go out and, and go out and send messages to them, right? So the reason I have this at step number eight is, again, if you wanna build a business as quickly as possible, and this is the way I would build it, right, is I'm not gonna wait around 
especially if I have no skills and experience. I'm not gonna wait around and post content for months and months and months to get my first client. I wanna go out to the market and get my first handful of clients, my first three to five clients without waiting and sitting around and posting content hoping and praying that I'm gonna have someone come to me, right? So I'm going out to the market, I'm getting clients first, I'm gonna put a system in place, I'm gonna get experience, I'm gonna make mistakes, I'm gonna improve on that, and as I'm doing that, I'm gonna document that in step eight, which is creating content and documenting my journey, right? Now step number nine, right? How do you scale? How do you scale up? All you gotta do is rinse and repeat, get more clients, go out to the market, right? Start posting more content, document your journey. As you get more clients, you're gonna to continue to grow your income, grow your experience, grow your skills, and you're gonna have more testimonials and case studies to share with people in your market, right? And as you start to do this, over time, everything compounds, right? So first, when you, when you first get started, you might not have case studies, you might not have social proof, you might not have testimonials, but as you get three clients, four clients, five clients, and you're getting a result for them, you're getting amazing results because you're leveraging an algorithm outsource white label provider who's highly skilled in getting that result, you're gonna to start to get case studies, testimonials, social proof, your name's gonna get bigger because you're gonna be getting great results for your clients. And as you're documenting your journey and you're creating content, you're gonna have people coming to you and your income's gonna to continue to grow and compound over and over and over and over time, right? So that is the entire process that I would take if I was starting an online business or building an online business from scratch in 2020, I would follow those exact nine steps. Again, step number one is to start with the service. It's easy to start, zero dollars, zero experience needed, zero skills needed, right? All you need to do is go into step number two, which is to pick a niche, pick a group of people that you wanna work with and help. And it should be something that you're either passionate in, interested in learning more about, or have experience in working with, right? Step number three is to create an ideal client profile. Who is your ideal client, right? So you pick the niche, get more detailed on that. How big are the companies? Who's the decision maker that you're reaching out to? Where are they located? How much money are they currently making a year? What is their point A and what is their point B? And what is what are some things that you can do to help them bridge that gap and get from point A to point B? Step number four is to research offers and competitors that are already converting well, right? You, know, you don't wanna reinvent the wheel. You wanna sell what's already being sold. Step number five is to start having conversations with your market. So start going out on email, social media, and start contacting your market, your niche, your ideal clients, and ask them if they have a problem that you can help to solve with the service that you picked to, to help them solve that, right? So you're going out to your market, you're having real conversations, you're listening to them on the phone, listening, learning more about their business and their industry. And step number six is you're gonna have a portion of people that are ready to move forward with you. They wanna get from point A to point B and they are interested in learning more about the service that you have to help them get there. So you're gonna secure clients by inviting them and extending an opportunity to work with you and offering, if you have zero social proof or testimonials, you can offer them some kind of beta pricing or incentive pricing to get started with you because it's like a newer program or service that you're rolling out, okay? That's number six. Number seven is to outsource the service delivery. So you can find highly skilled white label providers or freelancers or agencies to do all the work for you without you having to know anything about the actual service, right? So instead of spending years learning how to do it like a professional, outsource it to someone who's already done that for you and just collect the difference between what you sold it for and the investment on the actual service delivery and outsourcing that, okay? Step number eight is document your journey and create content, right? So as you get more clients, as you start getting results for them, document that and post that on your social media platform, send it to your email list, right? Document everything you're doing and create content that's valuable to your ideal clients in your niche. And step number nine is you can scale up by just rinsing and repeating and getting more clients, right? So once you have systems in place for having conversations, you have a message that works, you have a niche, you have an ideal client, you're starting to convert and get clients, all you gotta do is get more clients, rinse and repeat, and you can outsource all the work to white label providers, right? So that's exactly how I would start a business from scratch, an online business from scratch in 2020 and beyond. I think this is the best way to get started. And from there, as you start to get experience in the services side of thing and delivering a service, I know a lot of people want to get into the information business where they're selling digital courses and, and coaching programs. You're gonna get a tremendous amount of experience and skills from running a service-based business that allows you to create education products, digital products, and create coaching programs and all that stuff, right? But a lot of people, they try to skip the line, skip the actual service and results, and jump straight into coaching and stuff. But 
if you try to coach people and create a course on something and you haven't actually done it, you're, it's, it kind of doesn't make sense, right? Because you haven't actually done or gotten the result that you're teaching people to get, right? So I think a service-based business is the best place to start if you're starting from scratch in 2020 and beyond and you have zero dollars and you want to start from the very, very first step with no skills, no experience, no nothing, I think this is the best place to start. Now I'm going to link to some videos over here or over here uh, to other videos that are relevant to you around starting like a drop servicing business if you're interested in service-based businesses and also the best niches that I think are going to be hot in 2020 and beyond. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I know it was a bit of a long one, but I hope you enjoyed the step-by-step guide on how I build an online business from scratch in 2020. All right, so I'll see you in the next video and take care.